Imagine this. You're already having the worst week of your life. Not just bad, catastrophically awful. Why? Because a creepy grandma spirit stole your baby maker and family jewels. Yes, you heard me. The full package is gone, but it gets worse. Just as you think you're about to recover what's rightfully yours, plot twist your jingle bells have been misplaced somewhere in the city. Like, who loses their... never mind. So naturally, you turn to your best friend for help. And how does she respond? By laughing so hard, she's practically wheezing. Thanks a lot, Ayase. Oh, by the way, Ayase's grandma, suspiciously young, and uh, let's just say she's weirdly attractive. Not important, just needed her to get her moment in the spotlight. Meet Ken Takakura, also known as Okarun. Our poor guy's spiralling. He's had a fight with Ayase, and now, as if on cue, he bumps into Ira. At first glance, she's all sweet smiles and charm. But beneath that, a walking narcissist. Oh, and did I mention she's now holding one of Okarun's precious orbs? And here's the kicker. Apparently, the second she grabbed his supernatural sphere, she gained the ability to see ghosts, demons, and all sorts of creepy crawlies. Okarun's package really gave her an otherworldly experience, but Ira's not here for fun and games. She's convinced she's God's gift to humanity and thinks it's her holy mission to exorcise Ayase, who happens to have her own supernatural powers. So what does she do? Obviously she ambushes Ayase because logic, except there's one teeny problem. Ayase and Okarun are both super-powered badasses. Ira, just a regular human who happens to see spooky stuff now, before the fight can really heat up, Acrobatic Silky, a spirit whose tragic backstory is enough to make a grown man ugly cry, crashes the scene. Me? I'm not even grown, and I was sobbing. Silky ends up eating Ira. Yep, straight up devouring her and starts draining her life force. But plot twist. Silky is actually a spirit with a heart of gold. She sacrifices her own life to save Ira, gifting her a piece of her life force. ISA helps with the transfer because, apparently, she's also got a heart of gold and a side hustle in supernatural healing. So now, Ayura's alive and kicking, with a shiny new spiritual upgrade courtesy of Silky. And how does she repay Ayase? By doubling down on her mission to exorcise her? Because, of course, what else would you do after someone literally saves your life? But wait, there's more! Instead of, I don't know, a dramatic showdown, Ira decides the best way to handle her mortal enemy is dinner at Ayase's house. Yep, nothing says I'm going to exercise you like bonding over some questionable home cooking. Naturally, the two girls argue the entire time because what's a meal without some drama? And Ira eventually asks Okarun why he even bothered saving her. <laughs> Folks, this is where the love story officially kicks off. Flash forward to lunch break, Okarun's busy training to level up his powers, and Ayura shows up like she's walked straight out of a rom-com. Except, not really. Because instead of a cute confession, she goes full WWE on him. Seriously, she's wrestling this man for his love. And then, in classic anime fashion, they fall. Ira lands under Okarun, blushing like crazy, because apparently this is the perfect time to expect to kiss. But wait, just as the tension peaks, who walks in? That's right, Ayase, Okarun's other potential love interest, stumbles upon them in this very compromising position. Cue the awkward tension and the love triangle hijinks. So there you have it, folks. Supernatural battles, life or death sacrifices, and the most awkward rom-com setup ever. Stay tuned for more chaos, love triangles, and hopefully Okarun recovering his lost property. <laughs>